Welcome to the Curator of the Culture, your weekly portal into the vibrant intersections of style, innovation, and culture. I'm Garrett, the curator and guide through this journey. From the latest sneakers to groundbreaking tech and car designs, we're here to explore it all. But before we dive in, let me share a bit about myself. I've been immersed in the world of design since the age of six, sketching shoes and cars with a passion that only grew stronger over the years. I honed my skills through countless hours of design, eventually creating over 5,000 edited sneaker mock-ups, a journey that led me to an interview with Nike in 2017. Though they didn't offer me a spot on their team, I refused to be deterred. In 2020, I unveiled the Fear God 6, a bold fusion of the Air Jordan 6 infrared and the Nike Fear God 1s. The design went viral online, eventually being made for Trinidad James by legendary shoemaker the Shoe Surgeon. But I didn't stop there. I continued to push boundaries, unleashing the world's first Bluetooth LED Nike Air Force 1s, a testament to my relentless pursuit of innovation and creativity. Join me each week as we uncover the stories, trends, and personalities shaping the landscape. This is the Curator of Culture. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Curator of Culture. I'm your host, Garrett. Welcome. This episode is going to be a little different than what I've been doing in the past, the last few episodes or the last eight. This is uh, number nine, so we're uh, encroaching on number 10. I don't know why. This seems like a good number to hit. 10, you know, um, but yeah, this is definitely the start, but I wanted to kind of discuss where I'm, where I'm at with, um, within the culture, what's going on, how I feel about things and what I've been, um, seeing and witnessing and experiencing. Uh, there's so much stuff going on in the world that I'm finding it hard to report on frivolous things especially um, consumerism at, at its highest. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot a lot going on. And I think it, I think it even reflects what's going on um, now in the culture. Things aren't, aren't um, selling or, or being received the way that they used to be as, in terms of um, popularity, sales, you know, everything. Um, and it's just because I think that there's so much stuff going on you know, political, uh, really political, economically, um, you know, there's a lot of, still a lot of race things going on. And so I think I just wanted to kind of just really take the time and discuss what I'm doing and what I got going on, you know, because what consumerism does is basically what is geared towards is having people, obviously the name of the game is to make money for everybody, um, mostly. And what that means is that all, every company wants you to spend money with them and continue to spend money and get as much money from you and you know every other person as possible. And you know, at a point, you have to really start to look at what's going on. A lot of these companies um, don't reflect the the target customers or at least the people that are spending the money. You know, like you look at high end brands and then you look at who's who's wearing them, and it's a lot of minorities. You know, and then you you know it, it leads me to wonder just like. Who, you know, who, who are these people in these, co in these corporations? Do they look like us? Chances are no. There may be, you know, one or two people seated in, but, you know, do they call the shots? Do they have the ability to call the shots? And what I'm seeing is, is that these companies, they may, you know, they may find a, a minority to be the face or at least, you know, give direction, but... At the end of the day, who owns it? You know, no one, none of us. And that goes across the board for a lot of, you know, almost everything. Minorities don't have any major stake in almost anything if they haven't created it themselves. And even so, there aren't that many uh, minorities being able to create, um, you know, on a large scale. I'm not just talking about like clothing, but, you know, you look at how many um, minority owned shoe companies. There are, there are very few, especially on a large scale. Um, shout out to like Saya 
and Cool Kai, you know, who are pretty much, as far as I know, leading the way um, in that space in terms of being an independent, um, you know, and, and producing their own stuff. But, you know, there's tons of, there's tons of um, like clothing brands, you know what I mean? Because it's not hard to start a clothing brand. But I'm talking large scale, like, you know, are, are any of these brands being carried in, you know, department stores or, you know, wh wherever. And so it, it really opens my eye and, you know, really starts to make me question what we're all doing it for. And not, not so much what we're all doing it for, but who we're doing it for and why we're doing it. And so basically that leads me to want to discuss where I'm at within, within all of that and, you know, and what I see. And I just want, like, I, I was, uh, I actually watched a, um, an interview today. Um, it was a hype beast interview with, um, Tremaine Emery and the, um, I don't know if he's a founder, but definitely the creative, um, direct. Yeah, he is the founder, um, of Awake New York. It's a, you know, a, a, I'm pretty sure it's a clothing brand. They have collaborated with like Jordan, um, and, you know, and everything, which is dope. And he's a um, he's a um, Hispanic, you know, a Hispanic um, guy. And so they were just talking about this in, in, in the same space. And so Tremaine Emery, the um, founder of Denim Tears, you know, the, the, the super major um, popular clothing company with the, re the white reefs all over the uh, sweatsuits and everything. He was um, mentioning a conversation that he had with uh, the late uh, Virgil Abloh about, you know, why was corporations suddenly um, flocking to, the, to, to minorities, you know, for inspiration and, and, and to be run and to spearhead things when overall the culture has been ran by minorities. So why aren't these minorities, you know, making calling the shots and, you know, like, across the board, like everything is being marketed to, to the urban consumer, or at least the urban consumer are the largest, you know, consumers of, of most of this stuff. And, you know, it, like I'll, I'll give an example. When I was a kid, um, you know, the, the new Jordans would drop every year. And, you know, for whatever reason, I always thought that the, guy designing the shoes for Michael Jordan had to be black. Had like, you know, like it just, it just, you know, it just how it, it, it came in my mind. Like this guy had to be black. So when I learned probably, I don't know, maybe middle school, early um, high school that I learned, you know, that Tinker Hatfield primarily designed most of them, you know, from the threes all the way up to, I think the 15 or 16, um, you know, it was like, it was logical, but it was just also a super a, a shock to me, just like, whoa, you know, like, it, you know, it really made me think. And, you know, and, and I also don't want to make everything about race, but it's, it's blatant that we don't get the opportunities that you know we deserve and of course you know what i mean everyone doesn't get what they deserve but it's, it's it's telling um you know and if you pay attention to it i don't know you like i feel like you should care especially if you're a minority you know what i mean like and even so if you're not like if you if you if you are part of the culture one way or another you have to you have to feel some type of something about you know, minorities not really getting a fair shake at things as they should. Like, yes, we get collaborations with these brands and that's dope because it does um, spread exposure and give um, these creatives notoriety, but it's not enough. There's no real ownership. Um, you know what I mean? Like we can't, no, no, no one can call it the shots at any of these companies really, you know what I mean? And it leads me to say, we have to go and do our own. We have to create our own, get our own across the board, um, you know, in every avenue. 
And it's been systematic that we aren't we haven't been allowed to um for the most part. And so it really makes it difficult for me to 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 continue to report on consumerism and what's going on in the culture when we're not speaking on the bigger issues at hand. Um and of course I'm definitely jaded because as a creative in the space and, you know, feeling like I haven't received the opportunities that I deserve or that I, you know, that I should get it, um, it definitely can, you know, weigh, weigh on you uh, psychologically. And, you know, there's like these just, per there's perceptions as well, like, um, you know, if you don't speak well, they might look at you a certain way. Or if you are a um, an Asian, there seems to be an inherently easier way to to um, to to get in. And and you know, and granted, you know, um, again, I like I, I don't want to make it solely about race, but there's there's unsaid thoughts and um, things that happen, you know, and it's like they, you know, who, who, who gets the push for support and who doesn't. And, um, you know, like it, 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 it's definitely affecting me and it affects, you know, more of us. Imagine, you know, more of us being able to, to, to shed, shed our um our talents with the world a lot easier and you know like if you live in a small place like i do your primary um resource for getting any of your workout is social media and you know uh like myself i i i i reached 47 48000 you know followers on on ig and then I never was able to um, go any further. And as of the last year, I've been consistently losing followers, um, you know, but every post that you make, there's a there's a, a button, you know, saying boost this post. So, you know, they want you to spend money to, uh, you know, to get your stuff out there further. And I understand, you know what I mean? Like basically, you know, most social media is a business, of course. And so they're in the business of making money. So you can't fault them for that. But when when it starts to become the, the, the platforms are so geared towards shuffling everything and it's not no longer organic, you know, like I, I, I grew all of those followers organically. You know, one post at a time, um, interacting with people, you know, and all of that. And now it's just like, it's a, you know, I don't know, you post, like I, I posted uh, some, some work, some artwork, and it sat for five or six hours with not a single like with, you know, over 40,000 followers. And that was disturbing to me. Like, it's not about like count. For me, but it is about it actually being seen. You know what I mean? So it's like you can't even gauge on who's seeing it because you you know what I mean? Like you didn't even receive any uh you didn't receive a single like. And so I actually had um granted maybe if, if I would have left it up, you know, maybe at some point it would have came back around and it would have been seen, but I ended up uh deleting it and then re-uploading it. And you know, after that it was, it was at least I started to see some likes, but, um, you know, and like I, I paid for ads, not like granted, I, you know, not a whole lot of money, but I'm like, let me throw a couple bucks at it to see what it does. And there was no growth, you know, really, or it, you know, it didn't do anything that you really needed it to do. So it was like, why, you know, are they just fleecing you? They, they, you know, they, they want you to pay, and then you're not really even seeing a benefit from that, you know, um,
I don't know, like, and you know, and there's different, different, there's, you know, different platforms and, you know, it does start to become like a, a, a hamster wheel of chasing, you know, trying to, you know, trying to, trying to get placed somewhere, you know, in terms of being seen and, you know, the hamster wheel is just like, yo, you got to play these games. Like Instagram was a photos app. Now it's primarily based on reels. So if I'm posting artwork that are, you know, photos, now I have to figure out a whole new way to present in real form. Um, and granted, you can post photos in reels, but, you know, that's just, fo you know, you just base it's basically a slideshow. And, you know, not to say that there's anything wrong, and it might even be beneficial to do that. But, you know, it's like changing the format of that. Um, you know, and, and it's been tough. And then, you know, you see stuff like you post something that's, at least for me, that is, that's absolutely great. You know, like it's something that either hadn't been seen before or has been executed to a level that, um, you know, is, is, is at the highest level and it's still, you know, people want after, after that day, the next day they want something, you know, again. So it's just like, like they say, the attention span is um amazingly short now. And it's just all about consuming everything, you know, it's consumerism at its highest right now. Um, So you know what I mean? Like they'll consume this artwork and then tomorrow you need a whole new artwork, you know? And not that it's, at least for me, it's, I don't want to, it wasn't, it was never hard because it was, it was natural for me to do, but it's just like, Hey, what I posted yesterday was really important, really special. And it's no longer valid because it's a new day. Now you, you know, now there has to be something else and it, it can become tiring, frustrating, all of that stuff, you know, um, and, you know, it's like we're all trying to make it one way or another. And, you know, it's just like, what do you, you know, you all, like, at least for me, it's just like, I, you know, I always have to backtrack and, and, and think about what I can do to, um you know, to, to hit that next, plat not plateau, but hit the next, you know, status or next level. And... You know, it's uh, it's just, it's just been tough. But, you know, me wanting to be a creative and wanting to, like, the only thing I've ever wanted to do was be a designer, um, ever. You know what I mean? Since, since I was, since I remember elementary school, you know what I mean? Like, I was drawing cars and I was drawing sneakers and it never stopped, um, ever you know what i mean you know in my entirety of life i've always always been into those two things footwear and um you know car design i even wanted to be an architect that was one of the like first professions that i actually wanted to be um as a kid was an architect just because you know i wanted to design like to be able to draw something on a piece of paper and then it turned into a physical thing was just incredible to me and is you know it still is to even be able to take something out of your mind put it onto a piece of paper and then that paper turn into a physical you know a, a physical thing is just um incredible to me you know like it there's there's no there's no there's no other way of uh describing that it's just it's it's it's, it's um it's incredible to me. So, you know, I've, I've tried throughout the years of, you know, designing different things and trying to bring them to uh, the market. And, you know, a lot of just life, life has, you know, life for me and, you know, it would halt, it would halt this or, you know, um, or, you know, you just wouldn't get the reception for whatever reason, 
you know, and it can really be frustrating. It can, you know, really put a, a damper in your mood or, you know, or really make you second guess any and everything. Uh, you know, so right now I've, uh, you know, I've been, I've been in a, in a, a really creative spirit and I like, I love that about myself is just being able to, to create because that's ultimately what I'm here for. I believe is to be able to create things and share it and to, you know, from, from my perspective, and ultimately try to make the world a better place. And it doesn't start with like selling t-shirts or sneakers, but there's a much bigger picture. And that's the one thing I've learned about myself within the last year and a half is that having ADHD, I'm a big picture thinker. And so while you know most are nearsighted and only looking at what's going on right now my mind a lot of times is like where where is this going to be you know later on or what's going to happen you know or where what can what can um what can we gain or develop more into all of that stuff and, um, you know, so basically like my mind goes on tangents a lot. Um, you know, I see things and another thing with like ADHD for me is I'll see something that, you know, is cool or unique. And then I can immediately reference it to something totally different and make that cool and unique, you know, and a lot of times, like, like they've said, no idea is original. You know what I mean? Most of most of everything that is on the planet has already, you know what I mean, has already seen an iteration. It's just maybe been revised or you know, improved upon, you know? Um and so that's that's how that's how I operate. And it's definitely probably the biggest gift that so far that has been bestowed upon me and I didn't know about these gifts until you know like I said a year and a half ago when I learned that I had ADHD and that I, you know I'm also dyslexic um you know and so I wanted to pretty much lead in like I said to what I got going on and what I've been doing I um just happened to be on IG one day and I seen a like I seen some I seen a post and someone had a Air Max one and I actually it's crazy. I'm pretty sure I don't know if I like the post or whatever, but I actually went back trying to find it and could not find it. But when I first seen the post, it blew my mind. This person had a, a, a Air Max one with the jewel swish on it and the the uh, swish was uh it was lit. It was you know, it had color. And it immediately like blew my mind, like I said, and they didn't have any information on how it was achieved. They didn't even really have any other posts um, regarding the shoe. And so I was just like, how the hell did they do it? And it, it kind of like led me down a rabbit hole of trying to figure it out. And so there was another video um that I had seen on YouTube where this this you know someone had basically um took an Air Force One a, a, a regular Air Force One and then they had made a LED swoosh like a full LED swoosh and then they cut open the heel heel and um or the you know the bed of the shoe to stick the battery in it so that at least gave me the initial spark to, um, you know, as a base. And while 
I realized, I, I learned that the shoe that they used wasn't a real, it wasn't a real, um, it was a counterfeit just based off of the, um, the sole. Like it didn't have like an airbag in it or anything like that. And, um, I, like I learned a while back too, the Air Forces had like an actual air, an air unit in it. Um, I didn't think so at the time. Just, be, I, I don't know why, because I remember looking at the bottom of the Air Force and you can see the, um, the construction in the, in the heel of the shoe and the airbag was a lot smaller than I would have thought or whatever, but I actually had ripped open a, um, a shoe probably like, a, um, in 2010. Yeah. In 2010, I had, uh, we had ripped open a shoe when I was actually working at a, um, a, a Nike factory store. We had this, like some old shoes that somebody had like, uh, swapped out, um, or whatever. Like I just cut into it to see, and um, yeah, there was an actual uh, air sole in it. So I, you know, I had learned um, from that. But anyways, it led me on to um, trying to figure out how I could do it and, you know, and everything. And so with trial and error, I, I basically figured out a way to do it. Like the first iteration that I did was, a, um, it was a car a car bulb, like a, um, a small T10 bulb, um, you know, that had a, a remote, a remote control. And, um, I, I had, I had some, like a jumper box, a small portable jumper box. And I hooked up the, um, jumper box to the bulbs, put it in the shoe behind the, um, the jewel swoosh. And I at least had a, I had a starting point to know that this is what, you know, this is the starting of it. But the problem was, is that that T10 bulb couldn't be powered by a, a normal um, household battery outside of, you know, you also have to think about the size, you know, of where you're going to put the batteries. So either you're going to be working with like triple A's, double A's or a nine volt. You can't use a C battery or a D battery, obviously because of the size. I even um, looked at watch batteries, but um, they, you know, they don't have enough power whatsoever um, to do much of anything, and especially for an extended period of time. And so, you know, just doing research, I ended up figuring it out. And, uh, you know, like, I've had, I had some success with it with, you know, with, with, um, putting the shoe out. And of course, you know, I made it on to the biggest, um, sneaker podcast at the, or I don't know, it wouldn't be a podcast, but a sneaker show at the time, which was full size run on complex network. And even that, you know, like shout out to Trinidad, you know what I mean? He definitely looked out for me, um, you know, more than once. And, you know, for one, I'm, you know, I'm forever, uh, and, you know, grateful to him and, uh, you know, but it was, you know, it also just made me think like if I created something so unique and it's on the biggest footwear platform that, you know, we had at the time, like why can't, you know, why, why doesn't that get me any further? You know what I mean? Why can't, why wouldn't they want to reach out to me? And, you know, do a piece when I, you know, I didn't see them do pieces on, you know, all sorts of people for whatever reason, just for color, you know, not to downplay what anyone else does, but I'm presenting something that's never been done before, you know, um, and, you know, that's like where the frustration lies. And so, yeah, like there was some success, but it's still like nowhere near what it should be for what it is. You know what I mean? Like, you, it, it just, things don't always add up. And I guess I don't want to go too much on a tangent because I'm like, in my mind, I'm just thinking about like me seeing people sharpieing Timberlands and getting featured on, on this and that for, you know, and again, not to downplay what anyone else is doing, but I'm like, anytime, anytime I present something, I'm trying to do something that has not been seen or done. And 
you know, granted, I, you know, I do know that not everyone's going to see what I'm doing. And it, you know what I mean? So it's not like I'm just being ignored, but it also just doesn't make sense a lot of times where, you know, where you see something that is so regular getting an opportunity and then you present something that is spectacular and it's going, you know, it's falling on deaf ears. But I wanted to, you know, really put it on film what I've been doing. And because I've never really talked about it in long form. I don't know if this is short form or what, but, you know, this, you know, is different. This is like one of the shoes, one of the latest shoes. And, I, you know, I posted this on IG and I actually just wore them for the first time a few days ago. But, you know, I wanted to share with you guys, you know, what what I'm doing and what I'm trying to do. You know, so I'm going I'm to light these up just to show you. And I did kind of like the one thing I didn't want to do is show exactly how I accomplished this because, you know, it's kind of like a trade secret. Once you, you put it out, you know what I mean? You no longer 